What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Would you look at me? Up before the sunrise. <laughs> I realized in the last video I said, oh, I'll show you guys this spot during the day. Well, I can't do that. So I'm packing up my tent. I'm getting on the bike. It's almost seven. I'm gonna go straight down to the food basket. Hopefully it's open at seven it should be. Uh, try and get on the road. So today we've got about 200 kilometers, 300 meters or so of climbing, 900 down. So that should be easy. I don't know if easy is the right word, but that should be a lot better. Um, we'll get to the border, hopefully. So let's do it. You can get a bit of an idea of the view here. Pretty nice. Tent, bike. All right, so I'm down at the food market and I'm gonna, I've got some tin fruit. I felt like something, I don't know, light. And then I got some bagels. Um, I'm gonna wait. I think if I wait till about eight, a few guys, Dan and Don, should roll through and we'll be able to ride together for a while. I think they'll be doing like 40 miles. Nothing like bagel logistics in the morning. Getting them all ready for the ride here. All right, so I met this fellow over at the supermarket and uh, like half an hour ago and he literally parked up on the side of the road. He went home, picked up a bike pump because I was looking for something to pump my tires with. I didn't even know he'd be here. And he's just like, hey man, I've got a pump and maybe a lift for you to get to El Paso. So, so nice of him. Trail Angel. All right, guys, we just did one of the last climbs, if not the big last one, for the tour. We're coming down the other end now. It's really nice to be riding with some other guys. I'm trying to convince them to, to ride a bit more today with me, but we'll see. So we decided to take Sephar Road. We we're a little hesitant because of all the rain that's been through, but so far so good. Apparently the saying goes, main unless it rains. So Dan tells me, and I think he's right. I'm glad to be back on the main trail as well. Ooh, should be all right, I think. You never know like how sticky it's gonna be, I found with this mud. Ooh. Bunch of cows out here. Hello. Oh, actually that's a bull, isn't it? Hey, you going, big boy. Hey, you going, boys. Yeah. Guys, we're in the desert. <laughs> There's literally only like 200 meters of climbing from here to Hachita. After that, I'm not sure, but I, I can't get over it. If anyone knows, tell me how many times I've climbed Mount Everest on this trip from Jasper. I know it's a lot, and there's only a few hundred meters left. I can't even believe it, man. So I'm at a point where I know that every meter climbed brings me closer to zero meters left for this tour. And it is insane. Look at this view, you guys. Wow, mountains in the distance, everywhere, all around. I never would have imagined it to be so nice down this way. Never would have guessed. It's almost 12 o'clock, sitting at 54 kilometers, can't complain. Got a bit of a headwind, but it's an amazing day. I feel fantastic, considering, happy man. All right guys, you can see the interstate up ahead. This is our last piece, as I understand it, of unpaved road. So, savor it. I, uh, <laughs> it's like super sandy and corrugated. <laughs> Typical. And this is it, the last bit of unsealed road. On the other side, the interstate actually for like, what, maybe 30 kilometers or something. Woohoo! <laughs> Today's such like a slow release drug, like, I feel like it's just like, oh, the interstate, we're done. Oh, the end of the road, we're done. Like, oh, Hachita, we're done, you know? Eee. I think that's it. Probably just over there, eh? Yeehaw! <laughs> it's 
saving nine continental divide. Oh yeah, look oh look at that flag guys, man. That's a big one. She a big one. Wow. Flags are so beautiful. Boys. Here we are, we made it to the trading post. One more step. Next goal, a cheetah. A cheetah. I guess it's not a gas station anymore. <laughs> cool. So we just found that Dan's bear spray's leaking, so he's taking it off there in case it freaking explodes. That's all I need right now. Alright, we're on the interstate. A cheetah bound. Check it out, antelope wells, the first sign I've seen for that, oh baby. Alright, so on the road to Cheetah, beautiful, smooth, flat, low traffic, cannot complain whatsoever. Guys, can you believe this? Look at the weather, blessed, so blessed. Hi guys, I'm in Hachita. Not too much here. Little store. The guy in there is great. I'm thinking of leaving a bunch of my stuff here, making the push for the border, then coming back. But the border crossing closes at, closed at four, so there's going to be like no traffic. So it'll be unlikely that I'll be able to hitch. But uh, I'm tempted just to give it a crack. Alright guys, there's been a change of plans. I realised, if I go to Antelope Wells and back, that's like riding all the way to Columbus, and then like, almost all the way to El Paso. And it just occurred to me like, what am I doing? Why don't I just ride to Columbus? So anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna ride to freaking Columbus, man. And I thought in my head, the road was gonna be hectic busy, Traffic was going to be really bad, but as you can see, it's empty. And as well as that, um, well, you can camp. You can pretty much camp anywhere in this town, FYI. But yeah, as well as that, um, New Mexican drivers are really courteous for the most part, except for that big gold that someone threw at me yesterday. I don't know if I told you about that. So yeah, I mean, it's all about riding your own ride. The fact that it goes to Antelope Wells just doesn't even make sense, man. Like. People are paying hundreds of dollars to the shuttle guy, Jeff Sharp, which, you know, fair enough, it's, you know, charge what you want, but, like, $200 a head for some guys I just met, and I'm like, I mean, I get, I would, yeah, I understand why, but it's also like, <laughs> why go to Antelope Wells then, you know, and that's just what I've realized while talking to three other guys. Actually, I got their YouTube, I'll mention it to you in a bit so that is the turn off to antelope wells the same distance columbus <laughs> look how dead these roads are guys there's no one out here it's paradise for a biker so after chatting with the guy at that cheetah general store place i'm really keeping an eye out for heads in the bush because from what he was saying You'll see illegals all the time, which is crazy, I thought. But maybe not so much when you think of the numbers. Like, I saw that over 200,000 had been apprehended coming in this year alone. And it, I don't know, he said that just a couple of weeks ago, around when he was closing up the store, there was a bunch outside trying to get him to open up so they could buy food and trying to pay pesos. So like, he reckons they waited till he closed and then came and like demanded food almost. Yeah, pretty interesting. So yeah, you never know. Maybe I can give some water to an illegal. Ah, mountains. Oh, typical, there's like no cars on this road and then I film, car. You have to let me know what you think about me going to Columbus instead. You're disappointed? You're proud? What are your thoughts on it? I don't know if I'll like go right down to the border there or not. 
Probably not, I guess. All right, so I just dealt with a flat. Um, I'm gonna stay in the middle of the road from now on because these thorns, man, they're all over. There was two in my tire. I believe it. Um, and yeah, guy helped me. Actually, I still got a flat right at the Border Patrol. So this guy, Lorenzo, he's like, oh man, I got a pump. Pumped it up for me. All right, you know, I changed it. That sealant in the tubes is not working. So I don't know what the story is with that. But yeah, he let me use his pump. It's just like electric pump. Super nice guy, so thanks, Lorenzo. Telling me all about his job, so interesting. He's catching people every single day, he said. But he reckons now, during the Biden presidency, as if they're not Mexican and they're not criminals, then they're allowed to stay. So, I don't know, yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's bizarre, isn't it? But he thinks that's, I don't know, he thinks it's crazy, but. I mean, he loves Mexico as well. He's a real interesting dude. So, anyway. Keep riding. Oh, you can't see it. A literal boulder on a truck just passed me. It's huge. I kind of want to see if I can get in the draft. Border Patrol's after someone. They just flew past me. This is a really interesting place to be riding, guys. Sorry about the back quality. Guys, I made it to Columbus. It was a hard slog, but I made it. Tired. Mars is killing me because I have uh, chafing. Anyway, did it. I don't think there's anything in town really, so I'll Google it and then find somewhere to camp. Alright guys, so I've set my tent up in the park under this pavilion just because sprinklers and whatnot and stones. Now I'm ready for bed. Alright guys, that's it for the video. We finished the tour, I guess. <laughs> Didn't do antelope worlds, but oh well. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to try and get to El Paso. I'm not sure how yet, so I guess I'll do a video about it. So tune in for that, and I'll see you then.